Well, here we go again. It seems the poor evolutionist cannot get enough of having practically the whole thinking world laughing at them. NBC News is reporting an article published in Live Science titled, Life on Earth Has Another Good 1.75 Billion Years to Go. Well, the crux of the article is that they seem to be concerned that one day this big blue marble, which we inhabit, will be uninhabitable and, believe it or not, they say, quote, somewhere between 1.75 billion and 3.25 billion years from now, Earth will travel out of the solar system's habitable zone and into the hot zone. They claim that new research indicates this fact. Never mind the fact that the Bible, the Word of God, said both of these things over 2,000 years ago, that the world as we know it will eventually not exist, and this world as we know it will eventually be burned up. It'll move into the hot zone. Once again, science is just now catching up to the Word of God, 2,000 years later, of course. But that's not what I really want to talk about. Here's where I want to go. Here is where the embarrassment for evolution just rolls on and on. It seems they never learn. It seems they can never get enough. From the article, listen to this paragraph. The evolution of complex life on Earth suggests the process requires a lot of time. Simple cells first appeared on Earth nearly 4 billion years ago. We had insects 400 million years ago, dinosaurs 300 million years ago, and flowering plants 130 million years ago. Lead researcher Andrew Rushby of the University of East Anglia in the United Kingdom said in a statement, Anatomically, modern humans have only been around for the last 200,000 years. So you can see, he said, it takes a really long time for intelligent life to develop. Now I want to make some very important points to the evolutionists who continually insist upon debating with creationists in a nefarious manner. Number one, evolution proposition is stated and accepted as settled scientific fact. This article is one more illustration of that truth. It seems that evolutionists continually, in debating with creationists, insist that evolution has never been stated as settled scientific fact, but rather it is a theory backed up by tons of scientific evidence. In actuality, it is not. It is stated as absolutely settled scientific fact, as you can see in the words of this article. Number two, evolution and origins theory are absolutely and complexly tied together at the hip. This is continually denied by evolutionists. And of course, the reason evolutionists deny that they have anything to do with origins theory is because of the embarrassment of abiogenesis. I'll discuss that in a few moments, but the bottom line is the evolutionist usually, in debating with a creationist, tries to claim that evolution has nothing to do with origins. But as a matter of fact, from this article, the word evolution is interchanged complexly and completely with the understanding of origins. As I have said for years, the two go hand in hand. The two are intertwined and complexly related. And this article demonstrates that truth to the embarrassment of the evolutionist. Number three, the evolutionists continue to state absolute speculation and mere speculation as settled truth. So, the first simple cell appeared on Earth nearly four billion years ago? Really? Where's the proof of that? Have we ever demonstrated that? Have we ever observed it? Have we ever been able to repeat a demonstration of it? Is it even falsifiable, that statement? Of course not. It doesn't hold up to scientific method. To say that the simple cell first appeared on Earth nearly four billion years ago is an absolute speculation. Then he goes on to say, we had insects 400 million years ago. Really? And where is the scientific evidence of that? And then he said, dinosaurs 300 million years ago. And flowering plants 130 million years ago. Really? And where is the demonstrated, repeatable, observable evidence of any of those statements? There is none. And then he goes on to say that anatomically modern human beings have been around for the last 200,000 years. Again, 
we have no demonstrated, settled, observed, repeatable, falsifiable scientific evidence of that statement. And then he ends it by saying, so you can see, it takes a really long time for intelligent life to develop. Now there's a mouthful. Life doesn't just develop. Develop? What does that mean? That means it comes into existence. Not only does it come into existence, but it evolves. Evolution of development requires information exchange, but information exchange requires intelligence. So how can intelligent life develop from information exchange when there is no intelligence in the first place? It's gobbledygook, double talk. It is pseudoscience, but it is not settled scientific fact. And then the fourth observation I want to make, I want you to note all 13 million known species of life right now and their systems and their subsystems and their complex sub-subsystems and their irreducibly complex quantum components all came into existence, according to this article, I'm going to say it now, magically. That is, without any intelligent input, without any reason, without any purpose, over time. Now, the guy in the article says, now, it takes a lot of time. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but have we ever observed that? Have we ever observed life coming into existence without any intelligent input, without any reason, without any purpose, even over the entirety of the demonstrated time of human history? Have we ever demonstrated that? Has it ever been recreated? You see, all the evolutionist does is talk about it as though it is fact. But that is called pseudoscience, and it's also called embarrassing. Also note, the inference is that all 13 million known species of complex life now in existence came originally from a single simple cell four billion years ago, which came from a sludge pond of non-living material and chemicals. The evolutionist calls this process chemosynthesis or abiogenesis. The other word for these words is spontaneous generation. In other words, life coming from non-life accidentally, randomly, without any intelligent input, which, by the way, is mere superstition and a proven unscientific theory settled over 200 years ago. How embarrassing. The best scientific evidence we have, scientific method evidence, demonstrated, observed, repeated, and falsified, is that intelligence comes from intelligence. And life always comes first from life. And purpose comes from purpose. In other words, evolution fails and the Word of God wins again. Do you ever wish that you could more powerfully, succinctly, and accurately speak to the message of your Christian faith and the Word of God? This is the book you need, The Magic Man in the Sky, Effectively Defending the Christian Faith. This book has been featured on TBN, Atlanta Live, dozens of radio programs, and hundreds of markets. It was rave-reviewed by the Washington Times, and it was called a must-read book. Considering the times in which we now live, you need this book. Get it today on Amazon.com or the WND Superstore.